Today's Tuesday. I'm so excited to be back with you today because we're back to Art Week! And art is my favorite. This is a painting that I have hanging over my house. Now this is not a piece of paper drying. This is actually, it's a print of an oil painting and it's stretched over a canvas. Remember how I told you um, when painting on canvas, the artist will take a piece of fabric and they'll stretch it over a piece of wood. And this is set up in a way that it can't rip and tear, but it'll be good for a really, really long time. So the person who painted this, his name was Claude Monet, and he liked to paint landscapes. Most of his paintings are done the same way this one was done with oil on canvas. Um, he started a movement of art called the Impressionist Movement. Now the thing that Impressionist painters did that other painters hadn't done very well is they captured the light. So you'll see in this Water Lilies painting that it looks like the sun is shining down and the flowers and the water and the water lilies are catching the sunlight. And that was a new technique of painting when he lived. So that was really, really awesome. Um, also, Claude, Mo Claude Monet really liked to um, paint landscapes. Do you remember what a landscape is? A landscape is an outside area. So when you go outside your house and you look and see what's around you, you see landscapes. So um, most of Monet's paintings were done in a place called Monet's Garden, um, which is really fancy. If you ever go there, you'll see that the place that he painted actually looks exactly like what he did. So we're gonna move on to our first activity today, but remember this painting because we're coming back to it. Okay, we're gonna do sorting today with a specific type of medium. What's a medium, do you remember? Medium can mean not big, not small, but medium, or medium can be a material that you use to create art. So our medium that we're gonna to use to sort is crayons. Now, crayons come in so many different varieties, we can sort them in lots of different ways, but the way we wanna focus on today is putting all the big crayons in a pile and putting all the small crayons in a pile. So, let's have a look. Okay, we have all these crayons mixed up together, but they come in two different sizes. These two crayons, they're both brown. This is two brown crayons. But they're not the same, they're different. One is really, really thick and long. The other one is a little bit shorter and it's super skinny. So we're gonna take our crayons and we're gonna put the skinny ones on this side. And we're gonna put our little chunky crayons on this side, the ones that are nice and thick and easy to hold. And let's see if we can separate them. Big crayon, big crayon. Little crayon, big, little, little, little. Ooh, what about these? This is crazy. This one doesn't fit in any pile. It goes in the middle. Oh my goodness. These are what? These are little crayons. These ones are thin. These ones are also newer. These ones are big and thick and older. We'll separate them. What about this crayon? This crayon is short. You see, this crayon is bigger than this crayon, but they're gonna go on the same pile. All right. Perfect. Okay, well we have our crayons sorted now. Can you think of another way that we could sort these crayons? I think we could pull out the crayons that are red. Let's pull out the crayons that are red. Let's see, here's a red, here's a red, and here's a red. Those are all the red crayons. We sorted the red crayons from the pile. Let's try one more. Let's do blues. We have lots of different kinds of blue on this side. So let's see. That's a blue, that's a blue. Ooh, those are both different kinds of blues, but they're blue. This is kind of a bluish gray. And then on this side we have blue. Good, we sorted the blues out from all the other colors. Let's try one more. This time we're gonna do ones that are kind of orange. Orange, orange, this one's kind of orange, this one's kind of orange. What about this one? This one's kind of in between orange and brown. We'll just take this one. Okay, we sorted out all the crayons that were orange, great job. There are lots of different ways we can sort things. You can get piles of stuff from your house. I hope you watched my primary colors video that I sent for yesterday and that you had fun learning about the different types of colors. Remember, primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. The reason they're called primary colors is because we can use those three colors to make every single other color in the rainbow. 
All right, guys, we're back with a number line. Now, my nose is kind of stuffy today, if you can't tell, because I'm having allergies. I've been sneezing all day. When those beautiful flowers come out, they make me sneeze, but I'm gonna try and sing anyway. So we're gonna sing our number line. Now remember, our number line starts at zero, but we start counting at one. So let's start at one and count. Here we go, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Okay, so down here on my table, I have some cards with dots. We're gonna try and cover up the dots and then see what the number is and see if we can find it on the number line. Hey, what number do we have right here? Do you recognize this number? If we don't recognize what this number symbolizes, we can use these dots to help us. Let's try one, two, three, four, five. How many do we have? We have five. This is the number five. Five is here on our number line. One, two, three, four, five. This number symbolizes this many. Okay, let's do our next one. Here we go, do you know this number? Do you know what this number is? If you don't know how many this number symbolizes, we can use our dots to help. One, two, three, four, five, Six, this is the number six. Can you find the number six on the number line? Let's see, there it is, good. That's the number six. This number means this many. All right, let's do another one. I think I have these in the wrong order. <laughs> Yay, we have another one, here we go. Do you know what number this is? Look on our number line, can you find it? If you don't know what it is, we can use the dots to tell us how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven! Seven, that's how many. Number seven is right here. It comes after six. It's more than six. It's bigger than six. All right, let's do one more. Okay, how many do we have here? Do you know this number? Can you find this number on the number line? Let's use our dots to see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the number eight. Eight on the number line tells us how many. How many do we have? We have eight. This number symbolizes this many. Eight is bigger than five. If we have eight, then we have more than five. It is greater than five, it is more. Good job, friends. This is one of Monet's most famous paintings. And a lot of times when we see this pond where he painted the water lilies, we see a Japanese bridge that goes over the cross. A lot of times when we see this painting, we see a Japanese bridge that crosses over the river. So today we get to recreate that. So hopefully your mom had time to run to the store. Right here I have from the dollar store a piece of canvas um, that they sell that you can just buy and they're so nice because they're not very expensive and easy to find. Um, the preparation for this is your mom's gonna need to take some masking tape. And I feel like after this activity, you might appreciate how much work goes into Art Week for Miss Emily, because this is my most, most favorite week, but it does require a lot of preparation. So what I need you to do is take some masking tape, and on my canvas, I've created a bridge. Now, we're gonna paint around this bridge, and when we peel it off, it's gonna create the white bridge in the painting. So we wanna make sure that it goes up and over and that it has some lines going down the cross. Because this of the size of my canvas, I decided to cut my masking tape in half. So I just took my tape. Skipping, 
I just took my masking tape and I put it over the top of something and then used a pair of scissors to just cut down the middle. And I cut probably maybe four or five inch pieces at a time to create my bridge. So as soon as you have this preparation done for your child, and it works just as well if you do it on a piece of art paper or a piece of cardstock, I would say computer paper um, will maybe rip a little bit once it absorbs the paint. So I really would recommend maybe using a piece of canvas. Um, and then the next thing that you need is we want um, colors to paint with. Now, the dollar store right now has tempera paint, it has acrylic paint, and it has washable paint. So anything, any kind of paint that you have, I'm going to use acrylic paint, but any kind of paint that, paint that you have is totally fine. We're going to want blues, greens, yellows, and probably a pink or a red. So go ahead and grab those supplies and come back. Okay, so this is a really fun project to do, but I think you're gonna to wanna to have your supplies handy. Um, we know that our two and three year olds really like to mix, mix paint colors. And so I've kind of put these in an order where um, if you start with the white and then go to the blue and then to the dark blue and to the yellow, you're gonna make green anyway. Um, and then pink, but I am gonna have a couple different paint brushes handy, especially if you're using acrylic paint. It takes a little while to clean the brushes, and so you're gonna wanna be able to swap them out. But the reason why I love this project so much is because it is something that your child can create almost exclusively by themselves. Um, so we're gonna start off with some white paint. Um, the white is gonna carry the light in the picture, so we're gonna make sure that we put um, some white above and below the bridge, and then we'll do the water. Um, and then we'll move into the trees and then into the water lilies and the flowers. <gasps> it just squirted It did me. not. It did. Oh, and it's acrylic. Go take ah, that off right ah, now. Ah, yep, ah, drop ah, it. Go, run. I'm so sorry, Haley. Okay, so you can see as I'm painting, I'm actually just doing swirls. We're gonna create most of this painting just using swirls of paint color. And I'm just gonna put some dots here where I want the light to hit. Okay, from there I'm gonna go into doing the water. Just doing little swirls of color here. The color's gonna change. So now that I have my blue pretty much established, I can start dipping into my green. And I'm gonna make the lily pads underneath the bridge, um, just kind of spread out where I wanna put them. And then I'm also gonna to start to move up into the trees. And again, I'm just making little circles, little pat, 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 pat around to make the trees. So one of the reasons why this is such a great activity for young children is because you really want a lot of variation and mixing of colors. And so when you allow your child to do this and when you're doing it with your child, just go ahead and let them put colors in wherever they want. So now I've kind of dipped into that yellow again to add the variation of color on top of the green I've already put down for the lily pads and that will just give it a little bit of light and dimension.
Okay, our final touch on this one is just the pink ovals on top of the lily pads. Okay, now it's Sammy's turn. You ready? Good. Okay, here we go. Okay, put it down. Okay, we're going to start you off with some blue. Okay, and I want you to take the paintbrush, baby. Only down low. See, this is a bridge. We're going to put water under the bridge. So can you make circles like this? Circles. Yeah. Okay, grab it. Circles. Circles. Yep. Good job. Uh -huh. So usually when I make these um, things, I learn a lot when I make it myself. So now that I ha actually have Sammy here, um, I can see that we if we do the blue in a triangle like he's done, let me move this paint. If we do the blue kind of in a triangle like he's done, it's going to help us get the right look for the overall painting. Okay, baby, now we're doing trees on the side. So go boop, 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 boop. Okay. You got it. Hold on, hold on, turn your hand. There you go. There's more green if you need more green. I need more green. Nope, not down here. Not down here. Up here. Hey! Bubble bee, bubble bee, Get your white. That one we use this tiny paintbrush for. We do little tiny pink circles. Can you do little tiny pink circles in the water? Okay, so tiny. So tiny like this. <laughs> Does it look like a masterpiece? Yeah. It's going to pretty soon. I'm going to love it. 
Okay, so you can see that Sammy's looks a lot different than mine, but when we take the tape off, you'll be surprised how it looks. I'm just gonna go back through his with some white and just kind of put some stripes into the water and finish off this edge. Okay, after waiting for it to dry and gently peeling away the tape, this is what we have. If you want, if you're a perfectionist like me, I'll probably go back through and touch up the edges, but this is, will be your child's artwork, so I hope you had fun today. We'll see you tomorrow, bye!